forever. Dog. Warning. The following podcast may trigger severe dork outs thanks to the guests' incredible voices and equally incredible vintage shirts. Be on the lookout for rapping rabbits, sun-bleached rides, and a heavy dose of Toronto nostalgia. It's the Looney Tunes at Six Flags with Looney Tunes voice Eric Bowza on Podcast The Ride. Welcome to Podcast The Ride, hosted by three very good boys who are deeply uncomfortable with the phrase putty tat. Uh, I'm a rackin' frackin' varmint by the name of Scott Gardner, joined by my co-host, what a maroon, it's Mike Carlson. That's true, that is what I am, um, but I'm still reeling from what you said earlier. Yeah, with yes. the yeah, I, sorry when I said When I said earlier, I mean 15 seconds ago. So. That was earlier than right now, yeah. yes. Uh, uh, well, we'll try to avoid uh, disgusting, lewd phrases Please. Such, such as that. Please. Uh, and uh, host number three, ain't eat a stinker, it's Jason <laughs> Sheridan. <laughs> I've been sitting over here with bated breath. To see what I was given tonight. I mean, that's we've you've yeah. said the phrase before, even not not even in the context of of the Looney Tunes. Oh yeah, uh, you are the stinker of the show. Uh, t- and today we are talking about all things Looney Tunes, including their their Six Flags Association, Bugs Bunny World at Magic Mountain, mm-hmm. and we're doing it because we're joined by. An excellent guest who he do, he voices some of the more obscure characters in the Looney Tunes canon, just some of the you know mm-hmm. the more esoteric, the deeper cuts, uh, such as Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, Porky Pig, Elmer Fudd, Marvin the Martian, Foghorn Leghorn. Too many to name. Uh, it's the Emmy-winning Eric Bowser. Hello. Oh, forget about him. Do me. Do me, Daffy. It's me. <laughs> do me next. What about? Am I a loser? <laughs> and am I? Well, well, who? What, what am I to you, Scott? I just I, the lists are arbitrary. I didn't mean to uh, put you in any particular order. We could do it again, and you could be number one, Dad. Oh, I see. I see. Not good enough for an insult from you. I get oh, it. Geez. Okay. Well, not I, not on your radar. I see. I didn't want to insult you. I thought I. I, I you seem a little touchy. I don't know. I'll I'll just go. Uh, come on, Daffy. Come on now. Relax. Everyone's friends here. <laughs> Oh, I was going to yeah. oh, start off with, like, uh, you can do as much or as little voices <laughs> as you'd like to do. Uh, I, uh, you I have steered the, the ship. I am just a whore when it comes to <laughs> these characters. No, I, I am just thankful to be here. Thank you, guys. No, uh, thank you for doing uh, it. Uh, again, thank yeah, the, these characters for me are, are, are who I grew up watching uh, and from, from anyone that's read an interview or seen another interview uh you know you'll know that this was the the bible for me saturday mornings it was it was reruns and i guess it was the 80s more particularly the 90s where these characters had somewhat of a like a renaissance i guess Mm. because they were originally made in the 40s 50s and you know decades later here they are in the 90s being you know slathered over air fresheners, mud flaps, uh, you know, for, for 18-wheeler trucks. Uh, Coca-Cola uh, cans promoting Six Flags. Coca-Cola, discounts. Six Flags. Is that yes. the right brand? I think it was Coke, right? Yeah. I think I got it. So, so, yeah. So. And, and that, that ties in my appearance here today is my obsession with the Looney Tunes, not just as cartoon characters, but as backdrops to uh, to the Six Flags Magic Mountains uh, theme park. Right on. You voice these characters who are like the, <laughs> the like the, the corporate faces of uh, uh, you know various uh, parks, and not just to, uh, just to jump around a little bit because we're sort of Looney Tunes focused. I don't want to shut off another uh, character because it's not like. You're you're the voice of the, like the the face of Six Flags, but also a character we've talked about a lot over the years, who is by default Universal's Mickey, oh, and that right. is Woody Woodpecker. Ah, uh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't get you into Super Nintendo World any faster. No, than what? any other. No, you gotta watch a virtual queue <laughs> yeah. when you get there. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm uh, <clears throat> the voice of Woody Woodpecker. They're like, yeah, yeah, sure, pal. Just uh, <laughs> you have a platinum pass or not? And I'm like, I do. And they're like, you can go. I was I there the last red night. Pass. That's what I have. Yeah. The red feathers of Woody. But here's wow. the thing: I've learned you can only it, the only way to skip to the front of the line for uh, Bowser's Castle Mario Kart the ride mm. 
is to have a VIP pass, which is four hundred dollars <laughs> per pass. Mm. But that includes a free lunch, a tour, a guided tour. Oh, that's what a, gets you the like. Now you're on the back line. You're going yeah. in the sets and everything. But, you're no. not just on the big tram. But if you're just there. Like that that is the only way unless you get there right before the park opens and you're lined up to go into Mario Land or whatever it is. Right, right. Yeah, that's the only that that's the hack. There you have to pay four hundred dollars. <laughs> money is always the hack. It for does. A lot of <laughs> Let me tell you something about money and theme parks. It's it tends to open doors. It's what it's what makes the those things run. <laughs> Not mm-hmm. electricity, <laughs> but just paper money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, you've been a uh, and uh, you've been a Universal fan, a theme parks fan. It seems like forever. Part of me asking you if you wanted to do this was your Instagram, which is a treasure trove of like <laughs> memories of yours, and you. It's constantly you seemingly proving your. <laughs> <laughs> voice nerd uh, uh, credentials. I sure. feel like that that you you were completely the kid who loves this stuff, and now you get to do it. And, and how cool is like, that? The again going back to uh, the night uh, we we uh, I I ran into our our colleague Kyle Mooney at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Yeah, uh, who we both worked with on Smash Saturday morning. Saturday All-Star morning All Star hits, which you were so great on. Some of our, our favorite voices in the whole thing. Thank you. Uh, we have you. We were there because of uh, the premiere of. Uh, to celebrate the premiere of Space Jam A New Legacy, which I was lucky enough to do one or five voices. I don't know how many voices I did on it. But even if I was like the out of focus, you know, tree in the background, I would have been happy. Uh, there were a lot of out of focus characters in the movie. <laughs> Maybe no you, movie ever has had more out of focus characters. Yeah. In HBO the Max, the movie <laughs> yeah, with yeah. LeBron, maybe. Um, <laughs> Sometimes. But yeah, we were there to celebrate that uh, that movie. And it was kind of funny because on the red carpet, if you were just kind of like walking in, uh, there was a mascot of uh, Daffy but specifically for me, Sylvester. And I remember, you know, when I first visited Los Angeles and first went to Six Flags, there's photos of me and I, you know, and I've actually compared, I've, I've put them together now where it's me from like 1994 and Sylvester in Six Flags Jeez. in 1994. And then what, that was like two years ago or, you know, 2020, like in the thick of the pandemic. It was actually a big thing that we were e- even able to go to Six Flags to right. do this because it was that one week in LA where there wasn't COVID, if you remember. <laughs> They're like, hey, it's gone. Let's go out and lick fire hydrants and stuff. Mm-hmm. And Cut then, the Six Flags padlock. <laughs> yeah, and then literally after that movie premiered, lockdown again. But I, I remember on being on that red carpet wanting to take that photo knowing that that photo existed in 1994 at that exact same theme park. Wow! Wow! So I, I had put them to I put them like side by side so you could see how little I've grown since then. <laughs> I'm still like uh, a tiny person, uh, but uh, a Wait, tiny nerd. Wait, which to th- to that end. The, uh, uh, do we have that picture, Jason? I think you loaded up a photo. I loaded up, found yeah, a photo. Eric, um, Eric this is I the got this blackmail on your... photo, right? This is yeah, the... yeah. <laughs> we will show this to all of our viewers. Uh, this I... is available on Forever Dog on the YouTube, uh, also. Well, you know. Eric, you might be ahead of me because I I see you uh, brought a shirt, but oh, I, I this... emailed. This might be the exact shirt that we we may or may not see any minute, and if, uh, if not yeah. now, we could see it later. I'm sure. If we did the 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 gist of this is, I think, a picture of you in you were in eighth grade. Mm-hmm. Do I have that right? If if the braces are correct and the laser background is correct, that was the yeah. The laser background really gives away a range of dates. That was yeah. that was the era. Not to date yourself, but never post a photo of you with lasers in the background. Because <laughs> uh, it looks like I was like a, a, a jewel thief. Like I was in a heist, mm. uh, you know? Like you I were was in, in the middle. You I was yeah. in mid Oh, oh there oh, it, is. it is. Look at just, this. Just that weird widow's peak that I have there. <laughs> oh, there it is. Oh, mm-hmm. God. Okay. The further down you go, the worse it gets. You keep going. Seen, we've seen the braces. S- scroll we've down. Seen, like, lasers. This is like it's loading on Windows in 1995. Yeah, I feel like I'm trying to download uh, a pornography in the 90s. <laughs> It's a very, yeah. We're just trying to get to a kid's shirt, though. <laughs> we're not yeah. trying to do something weird. No, we're nothing not trying weird. to do it. Just trying to see a, 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 a eighth grader's full shirt. Yeah, if, if you want to scroll shirt. down a few more uh, uh, pixels, maybe we'll get to the juice of the photo. Or is this all? Re- there yeah, it is. There it is. Oh. Good oh, wow. God, For the listeners. This it's, is kind. This is a very uh, ni- early '90s kind of like purple pastel. <laughs> 
pattern that's extremely busy in very yeah. 90s it's, fashion, and the pattern is primarily made up of Bugs Bunny. It's like a yes, wild berry pop tart of a shirt. <laughs> it's such a good, attra- like it's like the most attractive color scheme to me because we're all growing up. We all grew up the same. This is know. it. That yeah. was that was essentially what was fashionable back in the 90s, and. Yep. This was to me like I saw this hanging in the in the you know the the, the gift shops of Six Flags in the children's area because that's the only place in Six Flags where the Looney Tunes exist, and I was like, oh my god, I I'm going to get married and buried in this shirt. <laughs> and I was in the eighth grade and I knew that already, and I actually brought it with me. Wow, uh, this is wow. it. So this is oh the my god. this is the uh, the shirt. That predicted my future. Uh, this is the exact same shirt, and for whatever reason, this is the the funny, disgusting part about it. There's a giant hole in the back oh, where wow. my ass might be, <laughs> like I blew out a fart and well, we ruined there. the garment. Yeah, no. And uh, if if this isn't gonna uh, make the podcast even weirder, I'm going to try it on to see if it. Uh, oh, if you it, want wow, to be, yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm so be, glad before, we have the um, video component before I yeah. pass it around so you can all get a sniff. Because uh, <laughs> That's uh, what I was hoping that you would do. Uh, like, like how you're holding oh, we it can, now. We can like, all do it. It feels like holy, a holy garment of yeah. some kind. Like whoever so, wears it is bestowed with voice powers yeah, or something. And so I commend is. you yeah. for holding on to it because that would go for hundreds on Depop. This, this, this is actually uh, the original plot of Big, uh, but they're like, it's too weird that he wants <laughs> to be the voice of Bugs Bunny when he's older. What if he, he just wants to be big? And forget about the Looney Tunes element. This is what I had pitched, uh, New Line Cinema. No, uh, <laughs> what is this? This is Looney Tunes exclusively for Six Flags is what the, wow. the label Exclusive. says. Can't find that on, well, not the internet at the time. You it, can't find that in your the Warner Brothers Studio store. And it says, so. Looney Tunes characters, names, and all related indica. Indica. Isn't that... <laughs> It's like a puff, weed puff. strain. Weed? Yeah. yeah. Indica and sativa are trademarks of Warner <laughs> Brothers 1991. Uh yeah so oh crazy hearing bugs say yeah. the, say the strains I'm, I, <laughs> is he allowed is that okay I said you got any foghorn kush that's <laughs> that's what I want to know son okay here the, the here I'm gonna try I'm gonna try this on this wow. is the t- okay. this is history I get, oh, here, is, am I hot, wrong hot that mic. does anybody else get nervous when bug starts talking and like in a way where like one of the most famous people on earth is talking to you <laughs> or am I the only oh yeah one? oh a thousand percent. <laughs> No, it's not. It's great. I just like. I'm like. Oh my gosh, Bugs is in the room. Yeah. Like no, I can't help. There's something otherworldly about it. Right. It uh, takes absolutely. me to a different place. And it, we're, this is a pretty successful transfer on Eric's part so this far. This looks great. <laughs> yeah. This fits. I built the time machine. I'm sure one of these buttons is gonna pop. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave the gut part of the shirt. <laughs> This is future proofing from clothing manufacturers in the '90s by making all things very baggy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Like, big, gonna, oh, big reveal. You're gonna big want reveal. this again in 30 oh, years. God. Oh my God. It's wow. It looks. It looks great. It still fits, right. guys. <laughs> if I could recreate the. The pose. The pose. <laughs> Can we key out the red of the curtain yeah. and give you yeah, some we'll lasers? Sure, right? We'll work on the post on this. Yeah. Uh, wow. So wow. either I was a really big eighth grader or I'm a very small man. It's either which <laughs> I'll just stop it now because all the dates I had lined yeah. up this Friday on Tinder are gone. Well, <laughs> I, I wanted to commend you because uh, that is something that I would uh, buy when I was that young at a Six Flags. <laughs> I would not have had the gumption to wear it both to school and on no, picture day. So people mm. thought, and they still say it, they're like, why are you wearing a pajama top to picture day? They're like, <laughs> mm. what is your, you're an idiot. And I'm like, you'll, you'll all see. Wait till <laughs> we all live this through this thing called COVID-19. And then, and only then after, I will be the voice of Bugs Bunny <laughs> in the year 20, 2020, I think. It's a good thing you have that shirt and not like a, a tougher to get uh, uh, voice. <laughs> so I, I don't know who else uh, uh, in Warner Bros. I mean, well, I don't know, you were in the Looney Tunes, but but like, you know, yeah, unless if you went to Universal and bought the same pattern but Frankensteins, uh, <laughs> right. yeah, or the fan, the, then you're just dependent on are, are they doing anything with the property? Is the dark universe up and then, running? Then my dream would be to be the guy in the Frankenstein outfit. And again, mm-hmm. It would be a very unimpressive photo of Frankenstein at 5'5". Five five. Even with those big phone book <laughs> shoes, no one would be threatened. The least intimidating. They're like, ah, Frankenstein. Uh, 
I want a picture with Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe. That's that's a picture. Is that the sound of of short Frankenstein? Yeah. Is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he just he is like literally the half the the angst of Big Frankenstein. He's like, hey. yeah, it sounds right to me. He's like, I don't know. But yeah, going back to uh, Six Flags, it you know again and being a, a kid on vacation, where where your parents give you here here's like a little bit of vacation. Here's your budget. Now, don't go crazy. Don't, you know, buy food, buy the things you need to survive while you're away for a couple weeks. And, of course, I was under the care of my aunt and uncle. But I blew it all on Looney Tunes stuff. I bought a an all-brown Wile E. Coyote shirt where it, it was the color of his fur and only his muzzle, eyes, and ears. It was so 90s. Like, it was mm-hmm. like... God, they were so good. Actually, you know what I should have uh, done, uh, uh, and, I, and I'm an idiot, uh, maybe on part two of this, I bought every Warner Brothers catalog off eBay. I don't think you, you can Whoa. search Whoa. for it because I'm, uh, again, obsessed. I'm <laughs> obsessed. Uh, uh, I, you can't find a 90s Warner Brothers catalog on eBay right now. It's because they're all at my house. I Whoa, bought really? Wow. All the, and they, they were released by season. So I, you know, there goes my son's college fund. <laughs> at least <laughs> the first few weeks of his university career are gone because uh, I just had to have that Rover Dangerfield cover of Rodney Dangerfield. Field and his dog self. Wow. Yeah, I'll send. I'll wow. scan that and send it for please, your your fans. Please send whatever please, for yeah. for the socials. I uh, he understands. These are priceless items. Yeah. Where did this catalog? Because there was the studio store, which I yeah. was really fond of in the malls. But the catalog was a whole other. So it was like the it was like the size of like you know it was it was it was very thin. It was seasonal, so it was only like you know spring, summer, winter. Of course, they had Christmas and holiday stuff. But, like, it was just for the studio store. And there are pictures of, like, celebrities that were hot back then. So I actually have, because it's Warner Brothers 100th uh, this year, I have been scanning pages of, of that in, of the catalog, and, like, erasing all, like, the like the writing. So I actually, if you check on my, on my Instagram, there's a picture of... Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, Mark Lynn Baker, uh, Bronson Pinchot, and the and the girl that played Marianne on Perfect Strangers, and they're all wearing Daffy Duck or Looney Tune stuff, and they're all like, like, ha, hey, like, cause they're popular. They're so yeah. They're, who else? Gene Shalit was uh, featured all featured heavily in Hollywood. Now like, you've got our attention. It, it's <laughs> like it's like him and Tweety and Sylvester eating cake, and oh, like, wow. Because I think at that point they were celebrating their fiftieth. And then there's one of Jonathan, there's lots of Jonathan Winters, like just like in different attire, like Warner Brothers ball caps and stuff. But they would get, and, and I, uh, of course, Frizz Freeling, Chuck Jones, these are mm-hmm. beloved directors of the Warner Brothers, uh, you know, history and, and legend. They're still alive. Mel Blanc also was featured in the catalog, like posing with bugs, like a cartoon drawing of bugs. Oh, wow. But yeah, there's so much good stuff in there. Oh, uh, there's an entire catalog just about Gremlins 2. Wow. So if you're a huge fan of that movie, I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> truly. And there's stuff in there that you'll just, you'll never be able to get. And my goal is to, to try to recreate, like, because I work with the... Uh, intellectual property like the licensing of, of Warner's. Oh yeah. I'm yeah. trying oh, to milk this for as much wait. as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. <laughs> I, you have a brand also. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, re- yeah. Retro Kid in, retro in, kid. Okay, in okay. Toronto, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Wow, wow. And we deal a lot with Canadian nostalgia like Degrassi, stuff that made it mm-hmm. here, hoping, you know, some Americans will latch onto it. But otherwise it's just a collection of really obscure Canadian children's programming where you're just like <laughs> What the hell were they doing in Canada? <laughs> like, why? Why does this exist? It's so weird. I, when, I was, when I was reading about your work, I definitely had some long detours uh, learning about Mister Dress Up. Yes. So, and uh, also looking at your store's expansive website. Yeah. Uh, thank you. And oddly enough, like Mister Dress Up was like our Mister Rogers, mm-hmm. and actually they were friends uh, at one point in in their in their history. But he was basically like our, you you know, our childhood. For whatever reason, there was always a guy who lived by himself that would talk to you and would have friends who were who happened to just be puppets that mm-hmm. also kind of live at this weird house that isn't his house. It's like right. a place where they could be creative and then like leave. Like <laughs> Pee-wee's Playhouse was kind of like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's true. Yes, you know, we go visit he didn't a place. Live there. We leave our creativity yeah. here at the single man's house. This is where we go <laughs> smoke weed is basically. I guess so. There was another guy in Canada, like another show called Fred Penner. Place. Oh, we had that. They put that on Nickelodeon too. Okay, yeah, so yeah. there you go. So uh-huh. you would follow this guy through a tree trunk into this secret part of the forest, 
and he would sing to you, and then he'd be like, "Oh, we, we need to go now." <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's too like bad. Or, don't tell your yeah. parents. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Don't Why tell them you went in the tree trunk. Yeah, so much stranger danger, but then also every show was go visit, uh, uh like one this weird guy's house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was come over, hang out for twenty two minutes. We'll make stuff, and I'll put some clothes on and pretend <laughs> to be someone else. <laughs> Everything's yeah. gonna be fine. Everything's gonna be fine. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, kids, do that on PBS. Do not do it uh, two blocks away. <laughs> Absolutely, do not. Don't look a stranger don't, in the eye. Do not eye. go to Mr. Smith's. Stay maybe, the hell away. Stay out of Mr. Smith's tree trunk. Maybe, maybe there's a new thing we just created. It's like a like a host that is it operates inside an abandoned amusement park, and he's like, "Come ride." Come ride rides with me. Sure. That's I have cool. the keys still. Yeah, yeah. Climb the f- hey, climb the fence. <laughs> I got Come a on. hole in the fence just for you. Right Go flip way. some switches. Let's see if yeah. any of this electricity turns on. <laughs> you don't need don't seatbelt. Get... Put we your would. mouth under this fountain soda machine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never goes bad. Yeah. Never. Never. Oh no, no a rat there. flew out. Oh well. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the puppet friend. friends are like, yeah, raccoons and rats and Oh yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Maybe maybe Millipedes. a homeless guy could be the sidekick. I don't know. Yeah. This sounds, sounds good. Oh, security guard. The security guard. Oh would sure, be. yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd be the, the nemesis. Grizzle of security of guard who's seen some shit. Mm-hmm. He doesn't use that word, but he but we know he has. Um, this is great because we need to like abandoned amusement parks have gotten a bad rap from the Scooby Doo yeah. franchise, yeah. and it's time to learn they can be I, joyous sure, places. Yeah, we can't let Good Time, the second act of Good Time. Oh the, yeah, uh, right. Yeah, yeah. You're not necessarily going to get drugged and left for no. dead. Uh, yeah, yeah. No. Things might turn out there's, great. There's no uh, a lesson doesn't need to be learned every episode. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Yeah. fun you know uh, um I, I think oh it's something else to ask you about too I'll, in terms of that instagram stuff i also love seeing you at the i forgot this place existed the building's still there but this might have been on your like la sojourns also that you were you, you took pictures at what was then the hanna barbera yes. headquarters which is now like i think people <laughs> live there it's there, an apartment complex there, it's that's... condos and a, and a gym Wow! Um, oh yeah, the LA man. Fitness is there. It's all. It's like a <laughs> complex just below the Universal City Hill. Yeah. And I totally actually, until I saw your Instagram, I forgot that'd be part of the kind of the tour that my dad would take me on. Is okay. like not just Universal, but yeah. they make all the, they make the Flintstones and stuff here too. What a magical! Did it you must guys have been ever so, get to like, see that building while it was not still in around? its state? No. no, I just thought it was an interesting building architecturally for a long time, yes. and then a few years ago, I saw like. A photo of the guard stand with like yes. someone in a yogi walk around costume yeah. in it. Yeah. <laughs> there, there are still hints and remnants of Hanna Barbera in that complex in that area, like paintings of like dinosaur footprints on the ground. Mm, I think cool. there might be some murals on the wall that they are still going to keep up in memory of Hanna Barbera. Um, but I remember, at, you know, being a kid growing up in in Toronto, watching Two Stupid Dogs, Powerpuff Girls, Dexter's Lab. Johnny Bravo. At the end of every episode in those 90s car- Hanna Barbera, before they became Cartoon Network, there would be a voice going, Send all your fan mail to 26555 Coenga Boulevard. And I was like, Coenga Boulevard? I was like, that's a weird name. <laughs> and I, I remember, like, a, I felt so bad for my uncle, who's no longer with us, but he never had kids. And every time I visited, I was always like, take me here now, you know, like, <laughs> I, I need to, I need to see this place now. And <laughs> Coenga, the most yeah. magical place in the and, city. And, you know, you're, you're probably like in your mid forties, almost 50 in this, like, you know, stupid kid comes from Canada and he's like demanding <laughs> you take me to, you know, these places. And he, sure enough, he did. He was also the uncle too, by the way, that would send me clips and, and clippings uh, of uh, LA Times uh, newspaper at the entertainment section like little mermaid breaks box office you know uh you know doll- he was the one that encouraged me to be in animation mm-hmm. uh wow. so that's what he gets he, he gets a kid that's obsessed so he in fact did drive me to Hanna barbera it was the weekend so it was closed i did take pictures <laughs> outside of this building and uh yeah now it's a gym and uh it's kind of sad but at the same time you know i i've i've managed to you know, uh, work and make friends with people that were inside of that building. The, the people that could tell me stories about hearing, you know, 
like people like Mel Blanc or Don Messick, who was the original mm-hmm. voice of Scooby. Like oh, right. in like the walls were paper thin. Like if someone was getting in trouble, you could hear someone arguing like you know uh, like four offices away and just weird stuff. And uh, you know I'm talking about like Frank Welker, who's still a, mm-hmm. who's still a living legend, still with us. Yeah, yeah. He is literally half of IMDb. If you look him up, he was like all the Gremlins. Uh, you Megatron. know, Megatron. Yeah, he's he's done so many voices and everything, but uh, but now he is Scooby Doo and is still uh, Freddie Jones from from that. He still uh, does it. He yeah, still, that's he still great. Does it. Oh my still god, does it. we got him on Smash. It was uh, unbelievable. You, you did? I couldn't believe it. Yeah, yeah. Just through like, I didn't even get to see him. It was like I don't think we <laughs> even had the Zoom window. It was like a like a scratchy bad connection. <laughs> but which then you're like, are we gonna be able to understand this? And then yeah. like that voice comes booming through. Like I think we'll be fine. <laughs> That's so great. I'm glad that he was. Uh, it just makes it Crazy. that much more authentic that you got Frank in there. That was the thought. Was like, yeah, we're we're doing this full '80s '90s tribute. What better way to make it authentic than getting like. You know, like the people from then, like because those vocal qualities you recognize instantly, yeah. but yourself included, I, because uh, we thought of you right away because you are the new oh, version man. of that, you know? Oh, thanks, Doc. I bet you say that to all your guests who, who voice Bugs Bunny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is so sad. I'm doing what? the voice and I'm wearing the shirt. <laughs> Nothing. This is like oh insane. My God. No, it's not. It's it's hitting. <laughs> we're blown away. This is like uh, I like this will be the nerdiest episode on ARPA. We'll, we'll yeah, just I want to say like I want to start being like thank you, Bugs, so much for all you've done. For, like I like that's at the decor of I think all of us. Yeah, you're welcome, Doc. You're Th- doing just fine. Look, hey. you got your own show. There's, there's lights and a stage. That's and a so, couch. Thank yeah, you, ama- Bugs. It's amazing. That's you all just, I ever wanted. It's <laughs> the most <laughs> encouraging note we've got in years. Yeah. <laughs> do you, can I ask a question? Do you do the Wiley, uh, like intelligent Wiley? Uh, yes, Wiley Coyote, super genius. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, it, oh, I've only ever done it like maybe mm, like once or twice, maybe for a a, a te- like a like an app video game on your phone. Oh wow! And it was literally like, here's five things that he said. Right. Just say them. Um, but yeah, Mel Blanc's uh, like normal, uh, normal voice print is very you know difficult to to kind of get because yeah, he had a very rich mm-hmm. you know smoked at nine a.m. <laughs> butted out at nine p.m. you know mm-hmm. probably unfiltered. We did have to ask you to put out your unfiltered yes, uh, uh, Chesterfields like, when we started recording. When you saw yeah. me, I was like, sm- like sucking on a rain drizzled cigarette outside. I was like, <laughs> is it time to go in? <laughs> he was like, oh man, he's, he's gotta gross. build my voice up. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. get the pipes. Uh, if thick. I don't, if I don't smoke these, I just sound like a woman. Yeah, I sound like my mom. <laughs> um, <laughs> you powered through a couple packs that we the, started. Yeah. Uh, uh, in terms of that Mel Blank stuff, you must just know beyond that you do so many of his voices. You must just like understand the general ecosystem of him pretty well that you know his regular what's closest to his regular voice and kinda, what, yeah. what's furthest I, I kind of call it the the house of Mel Blanc and it's like some uh, some characters uh, live in the attic so if I'm doing Tweety it's almost almost the same voice as uh, Bugs but Bugs is like maybe like a step down here so Tweety I'll do a self pitch like it's up here, and you kind of have to talk like a baby. So all the uh, L's and W's and all that stuff, like uh, you can't say Granny. He always says uh, Dwanny with a D. <laughs> Dwanny, <Whoa>. that <laughs> putty cat's trying to chase me. And then they'll pitch that up. And then uh, Bugs, I kind of ask them, or or maybe suggest maybe not to pitch that up at all because oh. there's again something. So weird, almost like Jack Mercer doing Popeye, where it's like, you know, you who olive oil, I bring you some flowers, and you who olive oil, I bring you some flowers. It's like it's this high pitch and kind of low voice mixed together, and I always th- I think that's kind of like Bugs. It's almost like this this uh, kind of uh, higher pitch nasally Brooklyn Bronx accent thing that he does, wow. and uh, but you could still hear that grit to his voice. Now, Sylvester and Daffy are the same voice. Mm. Um, fo- fo- uh, by the way, you'll never use this mic again. This is like, I'll probably have to buy this mic. <laughs> fo- <laughs> Sylvester's like here, right? He's that big floppy cat that's trying to eat that bird. I'm going to eat that yellow canary if it's the last thing I do. Um, that one but, got to me so much yeah. more than I thought it would. I'm yeah. excited about all of yeah. these, but for, I didn't. I didn't yeah. think that one was going to hit me so hard. But That's so cool. Sylvester is the same voice that he did for Daffy, but they would take this and 
speed it up. They'd pitch it up. And Whoa. when I do Daffy, I'm doing what we remember Daffy as how he sounds, which to me is Richard Dreyfus with a lisp. That's uh, all it is. Okay. Mm. Whoa, Mayor Vaughn, what we're dealing with here is a perfect eating machine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all he wants to do is eat people and make little baby sharks. <laughs> yeah, like that's what I, whenever Whoa. I hear Daffy, I think about like Richard Dreyfus. Jeez. Um, I never would have made that connection. That's insane. And then uh, Pepe Le Pew, uh, I say he is in the basement for other reasons as well. He is a pervert, mm. and uh, we <laughs> keep him there. Stays down there, sure. Uh, the but uh, he is in the same rate, I say, as Foghorn Leghorn. So if you take that same bassy type voice and do French and then do Southern, it's in the, I say, in the same. Pay attention, Scott. <laughs> I'm talking here. With you, yeah, with you. Yeah. Well, anyways, that's kind of like the the Ferris wheel of... of uh, of characters, oh I guess. God. Do you really do you like visualize that too? When you are you sort of like spatially kind of like to kind go of. to those places? Yeah, I mean, and also when when we record, I'm not doing the back and forth between characters. I'm kind of like, if I'm like when we do Bugs Bunny Builders, I'll do Tweety first, then I'll do Daffy, and then I'll to separate Tweety from Bugs, I'll I'll do Daffy in the middle. So oh wow! So I'm like going. I'm reading the the script like three times essentially. <laughs> when when you were a kid, were you like doing it analytically, or did you just do it pretty well? And then as you got older, you like got oh, the extra. I think it's the the same answer for every kid growing up. It's like it just sounds like a kid doing it, right? It sounds sure. like it sounds like worried parents going, "What's wrong with him?" <laughs> uh, I think he hit his head sometime during recess yesterday. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, for me, it was Who Framed Roger Rabbit. That was the oh, movie yeah. that like. I thought was real. Like I thought, like, mm -hmm. oh man, if I go to Hollywood, Bugs Bunny will be walking down the street. And uh, <laughs> I'm Koenga. He's always there. He <laughs> loves that's, it. That's a lot more charming than like, say, Mike and I going. Like, I am scared of the dip. I can never meet this oh. judge. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, we were worried about the judge. Yeah, it, it was, was more nervous. Christopher Lloyd was. The t I was. T I'm still mm -hmm. terrified of Christopher Lloyd because yeah, yeah. sure. I'm afraid his eyes will turn into daggers, cartoon daggers. Yeah. yeah God. Um, so but yeah, I, I mean. I think as a kid, you you run around the house thinking you I you know I nailed it I nailed this voice mm -hmm. and it just sounds like a kid doing it. But it wasn't until high school when like they're like, okay, we get it. You can do voices. Mm -hmm. uh, stop, <laughs> please stop. Uh, and then they they'd be like, well, why don't we let him just get it all out and do the morning announcements? So Whoa. they they like let me go on the PA system. I could have said anything. I could have done awful things, but mm. uh, I took that as a as a way of a, a creative outlet. And 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 the teachers were so nice. And um, yeah, Car Cardinal Newman High School is where I went. It's 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 at this place in Scarborough where I grew up, which is where they filmed the Love Guru. Uh, wow, Mike Myers really? hits oh, wow. the Love Guru. Very that, recently well, talked about on this. We show. just talked about probably, really, probably a lot. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, well, that whole scene at the end where they're dancing, they're doing the whole Bollywood number. It was done in Scarborough, like wow, my high school. Really? My, if you just look up, my high school was right there, where, <laughs> where they were dancing. Yeah, now I'm really impressed. Now, now I'm telling you, I I live like. One block over from Mike Myers Way, which is actually just a because they named a street after him. That's I'm I'm from Scar Scarborough. Mm -hmm. It's like Jim Carrey was from Scarborough, mm -hmm. or worked and lived in Scarborough. John Candy went to high school at Neil McNeil. It's like an all boys high school. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, there's something weird about Scarborough and uh, <laughs> people people with the ability to, to get morph into weird characters. I guess is it like is there like a like a, a mundanity to it? That like yeah. makes a spark of like I have to go crazy I, and probably yeah. Weird. I was gonna say like you know what keeps us humble are those disgusting winters. I heard like mm. I heard last week in Toronto there was like a day where it was like you know they got like seventy degree weather or whatever, and then like literally the following day was just like. Four feet of snow. <laughs> so, it's like not not so not not so fast there, guys. You still got a few more months of this shit. Mm -hmm. You ever have to fight back the Canadian in the void? Do you ever like oh, yeah. find some Canadian in a in Daffy or Sylvester? As something? soon as they go back, even for five minutes, it's like Rick Moranis, and then you come back mm -hmm. and you're like, oh hey, like it's Lewis Tully from <laughs> Who Does Your Taxes? Like I'll come back here eh? and it'll just be like, oh, uh, it's embarrassing, but it's also like. 
you know, I always say I re- recharge my Canadian comedy batteries when I go back. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, you should. Uh, um, well, so, okay, to, to dovetail it back into theme park stuff a little bit. Oh, oh, here's the thing. Uh, before we talk a little bit of Six Flags, because this was a question I had uh, just when we were DMing, I, I, I wondered, you must have done voices in attractions Somewhere, if, I, I couldn't tell you where, but well, I found one. But but yeah. you 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 tell me. The, okay, so uh, it, it is crazy that now we live in this uh, this age and era of, uh, you know, hey, celebrities get busy. They get too busy, or you know, they've they've been known to ask for lots of money, and uh, sure. as they should, <laughs> they've created such amazing characters. Uh, Believe it or not, I'm the voice match for Antonio Banderas for Puss in Boots for for DreamWorks. Oh, (laughs) wow, wow. So all you have to do is close your eyes and listen to this voice. And that is what I do for Puss in Boots. (laughs) Yeah, it's like I'm able to do like the sporadic like burst of energy that he has and then all of that low, low, low stuff. Yeah. Trust me. Yeah, uh, so... (laughs) They they made a ride, a roller coaster, actually in Universal Studios Singapore. Mm-hmm. Oh right! And yeah. uh, I and surprise, I got us all tickets. We're going but, next hey. week. Oh, the red eye. Just Let's no, I it. didn't. Sorry, guys, I'm a liar. <laughs> I'm also aside from uh, the voice match of Antonio Banderas, a pathological liar to oh, okay. to uh, people that I just meet. Uh, I have to tell one big lie. Uh, well, that's what when you came in and you said I'm not a liar. <laughs> I just took that. that was, but it turns out that was the that first was lie. The first lie. Oh, uh, yeah, and there's there's an on air lie which I just did, and then when the credits. <laughs> Role, I'll be like, guys, I am also the president of the United States. Why, why not true. Real, not true. Also a lie. That's like Real the prestige me again. of the lies. But if you are in Singapore, please let me know how that you know because there there are moments in the ride where it's like you're you're waiting and it's it's me going. The restrooms are over here. Yeah, it's like <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> there's the arbitrary things they made me say. But I wow. I can't wait to one day uh, you know go to Singapore. Uh, Aside from Singapore, I was in London for a wedding to to uh, visit for a wedding, and I was able to see something that I did that was a walk through attraction like by the eye that giant oh, yeah. Ferris wheel, and oh, yeah. that whole area is basically like Times Square or like you know Hollywood Boulevard. It's it's basically like the attraction site of of London, England, yeah. and uh, DreamWorks has a theater there where you do a walk through Shrek. Thing and my voice is there as Puss in Boots. There's wow, there, wow. there's a oh. thing where he's on a screen and for I don't know how they did this. I'm still like puzzled from this day. He coughs out a hairball and the hairball comes out of the screen and like falls into the crowd somewhere. <laughs> wow. wow! And I'm like, how they how they do that? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I want to know. I was like, I was like, I have a question. How how the hell did you guys do that? It's kind of amazing how they did that. I know how you did half of it uh, yeah. from <laughs> yeah. doing it. But... Speaking of a voice and <laughs> yeah. doing the coughing, but I was like, how the hell did that come out of the screen? Jeez. I want to know. That's like uh, catching the bouquet at a wedding or something. You get the <laughs> curveball. Like, yeah. Yeah. Antonio Banderas phlegm. Yeah. <laughs> the other one I saw was that, uh, uh, and y- you can assert if this is correct or not, but I, I saw that you did the voice of Marvin the Martian. Yes. Oh, yeah. Isn't that <laughs> lovely? I did. Actually, the lo- of all the characters I've done for Looney Tunes, the longest, uh, oh. uh, like over over 12 years, I think now. Yeah. Oh, wow. 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 That 12 Earth me. years, creature, uh, Earth creature. Isn't <laughs> that lovely? <laughs> uh, for which, was that another attraction? That's I have it that you do that voice in Warner Brothers oh. Movie World oh. Dubai. Yes, Dubai. In Dubai. Of all the not... places... So in Dubai, somewhere in the middle of Dubai, uh, exists this giant Vegas-like indoor theme park that is Warner Brothers and DC Comics themed. Yeah. And it's all fully licensed. And like, there's a Flintstones ride. There's a Looney Tunes ride. Uh, apparently a Marvin, a, a Marvin the Martian ride. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> and stage shows where I've done like... Oh. Like they did something for Space Jam, and they did like something for the holidays last year, where I will have to do, you know, Christmas. What's that? 
that all about? <laughs> Woohoo! I'm greedy. I hope I learned my lesson in 45 minutes of dancing. <laughs> talking about this with you. And it's like someone in like poor soul in this costume, like moving around to my voice. And a, a ghost who resembles Foghorn Leghorn yeah. appears to Daffy <laughs> to teach him a lesson. Now I say, sp- spirit! Ah, no more spirit! I've seen enough! Yeah. I get it! I'm an asshole. <laughs> yeah, um, Sounds like a good show. Yeah, yeah. it's good. It's good. Though. It's gonna be a good one. We're gonna <laughs> we, do one. We're you. The, the four of us are gonna do this right after this, and we on this stage. We're gonna. I can get us free tickets to it because we've been gotten a PR email <laughs> saying we could get free tickets, but we have to fly out. Oh my god, are you kidding me? No, all I'm we not. have to do is finance the flight. All we have to, to do fly, is fly and put then... ourselves up, and then probably pay for food. But the tickets. <laughs> And watch out for various like traps that you might end up <laughs> yeah, in. Don't worry about that. That's nothing. That sort of thing doesn't happen three, at a Marriott courtyard, Dubai. <laughs> three, three white guys and one Filipino Canadian. What could go wrong? That that sounds like sounds uh, that sounds like. What could we get for that? That sounds like a bunch of bad people scratching their chin, going, "Yeah, yeah, millions, maybe, <laughs> perhaps trillions." As long as we get to go on the Flintstones ride. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah, can hear free. me going. I do oh, Dino's voice. Dad. Yeah, oh I do that. God. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Dino. Wow. So I heard, and then this is this is true, I guess. Uh, when I when I uh, when I first booked it, I was going, I was barking out, and a uh, very famed voice director Andrea Romano, who worked with Mel Blanc while he was still alive, she said, "Are you doing what Mel did?" And I was like, "What's that?" And she's like, "He inhaled when he barked, like row, row, to get that like higher Whoa. pitch." Whoa. So there's another. Another trick. Another trick. That's cool. I spelled on your podcast. Straight from you the source. You have to inhale for Dino, apparently. Is row, there... row, 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 row. Yeah, it's so cool. Is there a Mel voice you can't do? Oh man, have you gone through his whole IMDb and gone? I'm just gonna. I have to check them all off the bo- uh, check them all off the list. Yeah, that's a tough one. I mean, I you, I don't expect you to have actually gone through it, though. But like, is there one? Yeah, glaring one. You know, it's. It, I I know there's one. There's got to be one yeah. that I can't do. And it seems like you can do all the big ones though. It's uh, yeah, uh, the one, the one, the important ones. Thank God. But yeah. I mean, it, again, it took it took a while. Like even with Bugs, I had auditioned only twice for Bugs in ten years. Wow. Mm. They only ever asked people to audition for him in in the better part of a decade since I've been working with Warner Brothers, and that just goes to show how often they like you know want to. I call I call it the shaking of the ant farm. Mm. You know, it's like this this crew of people build this thing, and then like another crew comes in and goes, and it's all gone. And they're like, we're gonna do it our way. Yeah. Um. But like in ten years, it's only been twice. And the first time I didn't get it, that's when I got Marvin. And then the second time, um, I was I was lucky. So, jeez, wow. Yeah. But you did get, but you got the foot in the door then, and now you're. Oh my god. Yeah. Amazing. It, was, it was a little nutty. It was a little nutty. But yeah. Sounds like it. Um, but even further, I also want to talk a little bit about uh, bringing it back to theme parks. Yes, please. Mm-hmm. Growing up in Toronto, yeah. we have uh, Canada's Wonderland. Oh, mm-hmm. I was wondering. Which, I've never gotten it. I've always been curious. It's insane. And again, I think for most East Coast and Midwest parks, they had license to use the Hanna-Barbera characters in the 90s. And I'm okay. thinking about K- Kings something. Was there... You guys know well, Kings Dominion, Kings Dominion. and Kings Island both yes. had them. Yeah, yes. So we Kings feel Dominion. like we did an episode once. I think like uh, thirty-five theme parks have had the Flintstones over oh, the okay. years. Okay, so really, and then ran and then weird shady RV parks in Arizona. <laughs> it's, been, it's just all over the way. Whoever wants it can grab the Flintstones. <laughs> all, all the meth you could the the, meth, the biggest yeah. meth capitals. <laughs> yabba dabba do. All, all the ah. meth you can yabba dabba do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, all the meth you can yabba dabba do. I'm telling you, man. Uh, hey, hey, Fred! Uh, uh, I'm grinding my teeth too much. Uh, oh God! Uh. Um, but yeah, Just Dino, gr- breathe in when he yeah. nails me. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was like the best time of my life growing up as a kid in Toronto, going to what they called their kid section was Hanna Barbera Land. Okay. So you would have uh, Bedrock Mini Golf. You would have like this, you know, the carousel that had all the Hanna Barbera characters. Uh, I th- I'm pretty sure there was like again that the drive-in that they had in Flintstones where you could get like a Bronto mm. burger. 
Um, I think there was a jet. There was there was a Scooby Doo's Ghoster Coaster, which was awesome, uh, uh, and it was like it felt like you were in the cartoon. It felt like you, this ride was going to fall apart at any minute, <laughs> which is half of the fear of being on this coaster. <laughs> like like we're gonna sue Scoob. Like I'm gonna break my neck. <laughs> <laughs> um, like Whiplash, man. Yeah. Like is my nose bleeding? Uh, yeah, I can't feel my legs. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, it was unbelievable that this place existed. And the one thing that scared me the most about it was not the rides or anything about it. There was a a person in a costume that was uh, Jabberjaw, the giant shark. As a child, I was terrified of this character. Something scary about uh, a giant cartoon shark that sounds like Curly from the Three Stooges. Like... Mm-hmm. That I don't know about you, but scares the shit out of me. Sure. Uh, you had me a it. giant. That's yeah. plenty from I don't any other details. Shark, that's just icing on the cake. A cartoon shark. Uh, maybe maybe because my parents let me watch Jaws, and that's where my love for Richard Dreyfus comes from. Oh sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I w- the like general production value at that park are things a little rickety. What is the like overall? So I mean, they've I've been there recently, Canada's Wonderland, and they're 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 good. They're, they they've held up. They still have some of the classic rides, but have gotten rid of a lot. Uh, they had this really great ride there called the Bat, and it was kind of like it's almost like similar to the Mummy, where you do it one you do the ride one way, and then you do it backwards and go like the complete opposite way, like. But hmm. if, if you were standing like right in front of it, it looks like a bat. It looks like physically it looked like a bat. They called it the bat. Huh. I remember uh, Sky Rider was a, a stand up roller coaster. You'd be standing up completely and it would do like a full loop, which was insane. Mike uh, likes the, those. That's Riddler's I like Yeah, mm-hmm. Riddler's Revenge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember that mm-hmm. when that first came out. I think I was here because that was when Jim Carrey was the Riddler, right? Mm-hmm. That was like the big, the big thing. Um, the days. Uh, uh, the Great Canadian Mindbuster. That was like I believe like a giant wooden roller coaster. And I remember this one. This is a great one. Top Gun, the ride. So mm-hmm. yeah. the ride based off of even before Top Gun Maverick came out. This was like this is this is the real sequel to Top Gun. Yeah. If I if I may say, <laughs> yeah. you got to go on the sequel. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, but like it was the first roller coaster where your legs were like hanging like this. Right. And I remember people were freaking out because if, if you're a tall gentleman, mm-hmm. they actually did a thing, a test where they put like a tall mannequin uh, on the ride. And I think like at some point in the ride, like the leg had like gone off <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> oh, my God, we have to make adjustments. Oh, God. We oh didn't God. compensate for, for tall people. So, there are no tall. Are there no tall characters in Top Gun? There are uh, no. Again, well, not, Tom is short. Are they yeah. all? Is that the secret? Well, that, Goose that. was a little tall, but we all know what happened to him. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Tom doesn't let an actor be taller than him in not a movie. At all. Yeah. Not at Come all. Not at all. Or else. <laughs> yes, yeah, right. Yeah. Kaput. Um, on the the end of like a uh, 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 questionable production value uh, uh, for attractions if that you can imagine that phrase is taking me to six flags yes <laughs> let's let's <laughs> let's dive a little into let's go back the the six flags uh because you you mentioned you do uh, frequent this place with your son the bugs yes. bunny world uh-huh. like the kids area at magic mountain you're fond of this place <laughs> it's as if the place was not touched from the 90s uh <laughs> the characters and everything that were is part of the everything Sun died, sun damaged, mm-hmm. like nothing is different th- in that place. And if there is, it might just be the entrance signs or the exit signs. But essentially everything is untouched. Uh, Pepe Le Pew is still there, even though he's somewhat of a, a character, again, that they like to sweep yeah. under the carpet. Um, but you don't sweep anything under the carpet when you don't have the, the budget for new signs. <laughs> like, or brooms. What? Yeah. Or, <laughs> you're like, what do, you, what do you mean we've got to take that apart? That, that would require a wrench and a screwdriver. <laughs> and we do not have that, sir. Yeah. Slags Corporation does you not. Could, you could take your politically incorrect characters and shove them because we're not doing anything. <laughs> I'm part of the u- local union nine zero five. Yeah, uh, yeah. This, to that, uh, there. This is not Magic Mountain, but I was looking up other uh, Looney Tunes rides. Uh, this is a, a Six Flags Great America. Yes, there is. There's some attraction. I don't know what type of attraction, but it's called Pepe Le Pew's Peak. 
which is a, <laughs> I just I just don't like to hear the word peak after. Mm. I don't want to think about any mm. peak that Pepe Oh, would it's choose. his widow's peak. It's, it's just a, like you give him a haircut. That's the case. Fine. Yeah. It's a little barber shop for it's, all the yeah. kids who want to get their hair done like Pepe Le Pew. That is the style. Right, if you walk into any supercuts, you can ask for the Pepe Pepe's Le Pew's peak. peak. Well, they try. I mean, look, they tried roller coaster cuts and it just didn't stick. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Six that, Flags did a, had a, uh, briefly in malls, had a, a, uh, haircut kids haircut brand where you like kids don't like getting their haircut you know what we do we put uh, footage of roller coasters in front of them oh my god that'll be fine that... mm-hmm. <laughs> this what? business will not fall apart in a matter of a year and a half S- six flags yeah six hair... flags roller coaster cuts we did an episode on our patreon <laughs> that's insane mm-hmm. yeah yeah did not uh did not did, work didn't work did did it not did it spawn like i need a t-shirt of that I need. Oh, there oh. might be. Though. Yeah, that should be like, in your. They had for kids' sure. parties and stuff there too, so I'm sure there were things like that out there. Yeah, yeah. haircut, kids' haircut party. You know, <laughs> you would have a party at the haircut. We all did it. We, we all did it, it. guys. It guys, was the nineties. If, if, if everyone in the fourth grade, attention! I got a party this Friday. Don't cut your hair. <laughs> <laughs> Just. Come come to my party. Mm-hmm. Kids would show up to school on Monday and not uh, half the class has their hair cut and everyone else would feel like shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can you imagine being the only kid with the, the, the hair over the ears going, hey, wh- wh- where'd you guys go that you all got haircuts? I wasn't invited to this haircut party. Mm-hmm. No where lawnmower accident. <laughs> you were all, yeah, all separate lawnmower accidents. Mm. Let's Fleets not talk about really this fly. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the uh, uh, in terms of like wh- what I did now, it, for sure it is like a has not changed in forever kind of land. But I do, I I haven't taken my son there, but I'm tempted to just because like for all the stuff that Universal and Disney have, they don't really have just the little dopey land with all the kids with, rides. with all the kids stuff. Is it nice in that uh, from that perspective? It, it is because you know like again, well my son is turning seven. Uh, uh, last night we were at Super Nintendo World. Oh, uh, last night. Wow. We, we, we have platinum passes. We go, like, anytime between three and six, if there's nothing to do <laughs> with your uh, super hyper kid, you take him to <laughs> Universal, you run around, you grab a you grab a Simpsons donut and you go home. Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> oh, Homer, those Simpsons donuts are full of cholesterol. <laughs> but Marge, it has my face on it. Yeah. Um. You do though. You've been doing those too. Oh, They've just I've been, been listing the old names in the credits, yeah, and it's been yeah. you for years. Yeah, it's just me. Dan Castellaneta is not a real person. <laughs> oh wow! That's an amalgamation. That's, that's true. An, that's not a lie. He's another <laughs> Simpsons character. No, Matt Groening created those guys, those people. No. Um. Yeah, I have much respect to the that. Again, oh, yeah. crusty land. How could sure. that should? That's another subject you could talk about mm-hmm. forever. Oh, but yeah, um, yeah. but yeah, having a kid, it's it's limited, right? You can't bring your kid onto every ride, sure. except uh, for the fact that I I brought him, <laughs> and it took me three times to measure that he was high, tall enough to ride the mummy. He's oh. a seven. He's he's turning seven, so he's a six year old, and I brought him on the mummy, and I'm like, this could be good or really bad. He could probably burst out into tears. Throw up all over everyone, uh, freak out, die possibly. Uh, but <laughs> we risk. did it anyway, you know. Uh, mm. We, we I took him once, and he wanted to go on it again. Wow. And I'm like, yeah. Daddy is cheap. He did not buy the ultra platinum, which allows you to go over and over again. <laughs> it's the one and done, and we have to go home now. Oh. And he was so pissed. He was like. Fuck you, Dad! You fucking asshole! No, I mean, he didn't say that, oh, but he, he felt it. Like he didn't say it, but I felt it. And um, abusive, son. but there, the the Harry Potter roller coaster at Universal, mm-hmm. you can take your your six year old on that. Oh. And I think that that the Harry Potter ride, the the half motion simulation, mm-hmm. half like roller coaster thing, which is terrifying, by the way. Yeah, because yeah. it, 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 it has like those giant ghosts in in there and the oh, big yeah. spiders. Yes, yeah, so they still get they get to me every time. I know exactly where they are it's and they're terrifying. coming. Terrifying. Yeah, the 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 giant tree that looks like a two headed penis. Uh, <laughs> that there is phallic, you. phallic <laughs> arms for that tree. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, come on, guys. I don't I don't need that. Come on. Mm-hmm. Just being punched by giant bendy penises. <laughs> yeah, what a weird nightmare you you have. Yeah. Leave that in your nightmares. Harry, look out for the giant penis tree, Harry. <laughs> look out. Don't wow. use your magic indoors. Yeah. <laughs> it's basic. It's Hans. It's Hans from Di- <laughs> from Di- Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh-huh. Now I have a gun. Ho ho ho. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just shift the accent barely, yeah. and then you got it. And you got it. <laughs> oh man. Uh, um, I I'm, I'm I'm thinking to I'm just trying to think of like details or like if you've done some of this stuff at oh well, the, well that was one question I had was that I was like wait a minute has Eric ever done a voice in any of these shows and then when you said no I don't think this place has changed in many decades right I'm like yeah he probably you were probably not recording new VO for any uh you know any uh, stage shows at the at the Carrot Club Theater yeah at that time uh you know I was just a kid but even now they don't really have any of those in the theme park and it makes me sad <coughs> that they don't excuse me um or that they don't have any like old ongoing announcements in the park where you could hear the character voices yeah yeah um, absolutely like there is actually a little area in that in the, in the you know the Bugs Bunny world Bugs Bunny and Friends world or whatever it is where it is like i guess the equivalent of <laughs> It's like the equivalent of American Gladiators for children, where it's like you have like these like air powered like funk like these like guns that fire like foam balls and and like a ball pit and it's like this whole obstacle course. Oh, one of those like indoor foam play. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but again, and it has slides. It's like a jungle gym, and it's a lot of fun for kids. And I, I always I'm like I'm always like two bottles of Purell like at any given moment. I'm like, oh god, he's he's gonna get something, and I'm gonna get something. Um, but there's no voices in it. There's no mm, characters yeah. like on a on a ch- cheesy speaker going, "Be very very careful not to fall over there." <laughs> <laughs> you know, like there's none of that. Um, Go to the you... Johnny Rockets. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I pick, any character of your choice. A, a uh, COVID protocols being scarily said by a Looney Tune over the loudspeaker. It would would be Porky, right? Because he could never get through it, and you'd be like, what, what, what do we do? (laughs) uh, What what you have to do, in in case that you run into, oh boy, you know know that thing that I said earlier, that you, it's like, just say it! (laughs) Just tell us what to do! Porky, can you just just say the word coronavirus? That's all we need, we just need... COVID, coronavirus. Yeah. Uh, we can well, chop the beginning, right? We'll just yeah, use the end. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right, we got what we usable. <laughs> yeah. Let me now. Where you do see characters is in uh, commercials, and I, I just I wanted to like uh, uh, play a couple clips for you guys and get get your thoughts on the Merrick. The the uh, Jordan, if you can play the clip, um, uh, uh, let's see. I think it's just called Magic Mountain Bugs World. You can sense like an evolution in these ads because the the vibe of Six Flags changes over the years and where it started was v- like this very heartfelt they're clearly going for for disney money oh, which yeah. is not really the vibe of six flags no. anymore <laughs> uh, um <laughs> or right, ever let, let's, let's let's look at this uh, jordan grab a smile take a ride bugs bunny world's just inside that's mel it is everyone. mel yeah bug sounds a little old in that clip Woo-hoo. tag along join the show i say you're old enough to go just for you. Hold my hand, hang on tight. Let yourself run free. Six flags, magic mountain. This one. It's what the world should be. <laughs> it's what the world should be. You that, know. <laughs> that really sounded like Bugs' grandfather in that clip, yeah. though. That was probably <laughs> so like, uh, towards uh, the end of his career and late 80s, the end, so end, of, end yeah. of his life. 89 was when he passed away. Was his wow. last, am I wrong about this? Was his last role Heathcliff? Do you know yeah, that? Yeah, it I was. think it was. Yeah. I think it was. It was Heathcliff. He was Heathcliff. <laughs> yeah. It was like, not Garfield. <laughs> right. Yes, yeah, yeah. It was the other <laughs> Garfield, but not. Heathcliff. Yes. Yeah. Um, incredibly heartfelt, right? And then and then we start getting into the evolution of it. Jordan, the next clip is called uh, uh, Great America Bugs Birthday. Oh. Uh, if we have this. And this is, I'm curious if, th- this is something I'm curious if you've ever had to do uh, as any of the characters, which is rap. Can we play oh, this, uh, this yes. clip? Hey, it's my birthday party at Great America. Oh, that's now Jeff don't Bergman. be late. Wow. Hey, uh, my name is Bugs, and I'm here to say we're going to celebrate my birthday. At Great America, we'll have a ball. So many rides, we'll ride them all. Make a splash, take a stand, and that oh, new coast is really grand. That, that, that's the gist of it. I, I, uh, that's insane What's that you can you tell it's a Jeff Bergman. Yeah. Wow, wow. So he was the first guy to do... Uh, to do voice at to voice Bugs Bunny after Mel Blanc passed away. It was Jeff Bergman in his prime. He was probably like 
ooh, late late twenties, early thirties. Wow. And out the gate, one of the best uh, voice matches I think in history. Mm-hmm. One of my heroes, oh, and wow. I've gotten to work with him even in the capacity where I'm voicing Bugs and he's voicing Elmer. And, wow. Uh, just a great guy, a super nice guy, super talented guy. And he actually voiced Bugs in Space Jam A New Legacy. Huh. Uh, I had just got cast as Bugs for Looney Tunes cartoons, mm. but in Space Jam A New Legacy, speaking of rap, <coughs> um, I was... Uh, Daffy? Uh, fo- I say Foghorn Leghorn, Elma Fudd, uh, 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 Marvin the Martian, and uh, P- P- uh, Porky. And um, for that, I had to do a rap, which was, uh, when people hear the name Daffy, all they're thinking is duck. When they hear algae, which is... Uh, algae rhythm. Uh, algae rhythm, yes, we know. Course, all they're thinking is yuck. I got LeBron <laughs> and Bugs, so who should I fear? The best tune squad in over 25 years? You want to be king of the web? Well, that's neat. Here you go. You can start by massaging my web feet. Oh, wow. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And then Porky had to rap, and it was insane because when when they asked me to do it, and it was it was funny because they... It was a gag that they actually <laughs> were gonna. They're trying to throw it out, but the director, uh, Malcolm, he really wanted it in, and they asked me to do this rap because it just wasn't working. They had other people performing this rap, and it wasn't working. And I asked, I go, "There's something wrong with how this is, you know, being being from Toronto. You know, we all think we're Drake over there." So <laughs> I was like, "It's like, hey man, this isn't lining up. Something's off a little." And I'm like, "Is the rap longer? Was it written to be longer?" And they're act. They were like, actually, yes, it was. And they're like, I'm like, give me the full rap, and then once you guys have that, you'll be able to line it up or edit it down to as however short you want it. Right. But like, but as of now, I can't make this work if this isn't like lining up. I'm sorry, because you know my rap demands are so <laughs> out of out of reach. Uh, and they they gave me the full rap. We did it, and uh, it got back into the film. And it was like the whole wow. joke mm. was that. Yeah, P- 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 Porky uh, was able to rap without stuttering. That's the only thing is that he... Oh, the only thing he can do... Yeah, is, with, is right. was rap without stuttering. That was the whole joke, and I'm trying to remember that rap, and it was... Uh, uh, it seems like this is, what, this is a part of the job. Ever since yeah. the 90s, if you're doing these voices, you're rapping. You have you're, to you rap. You have to. As soon as they've invented that shirt with Taz and Bugs wearing the jeans backwards... <laughs> yes. Like, that doomed the characters... <laughs> Forever, that they have to be. There's a hip hop element to these characters that needs to exist. Were you excited when Taz shirts became like, uh, like, because you were probably wearing them when you were young? Oh, and then I was. It, now it's had this whole. You know who's still wearing them is is Kyle. Kyle Moon. Oh yeah, Kyle. Sure. I was like, thinking, Shout like I, I believe, like I may have gifted him some modern stuff, but I think he just oh, goes wow. straight for the vintage. Like he yeah. loves the yeah, vintage yeah. stuff. Oh, great, so great collection. Absolutely. If, you, if you're looking to get Kyle a holiday present this year, make sure it is not <laughs> modern. Make Make sure it is from the, like it has to say 1994 on it or something. And make sure Eric has not already purchased it on eBay. <laughs> if, if Eric <laughs> has a good uh, chance that I might have it. Demolish the a fields. Beating war. <laughs> yeah, it's probably for, a good too. Uh, here th- it is one more thing in terms of like uh, uh, modern influences creeping into the characters. That you know, there are a few I was thinking about playing, but I think the one I want to see. I'm going to give it away what it is, which is hips don't lie. <laughs> Oh my God! This no. is—I don't think it's Magic Mountain. I think it's another six. It might be Georgia, possibly. Uh, um, can we see hips? Don't lie, Jordan. <laughs> the Shakira song. Mm-hmm. Oh no! Oh yeah! Oh. Make a rabbit want to speak Spanish. <laughs> Trying to kind figure out who it is, Sage. That might be Joe Lasky. One little line here at the end. In the carrot patch. Wait, what? Wait. You see you move like you do in the carrot patch. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, okay. Because the rabbits. <laughs> Let me check if you'd remember you if you did that one. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see the way you move like we do in. I'm trying to fit some lyrics here uncomfortably <laughs> that don't rhyme. <laughs> I believe that was Joe Lasky. He was a stand up comic as well as a stand up comedian. He was in a 
sitcom called Out of This World. He was the wacky. Oh, yeah. He yeah. was the wacky oh. next door neighbor that wore loud shirt. I could that could be me right now. <laughs> That's your uh, sitcom part. <laughs> but he was also the voice of Plucky Duck in Tiny Tunes. Oh and, yeah, uh, sure, man. And, Did you grow up with that too? Where I, yeah. I, I think we're probably all big yeah. Tiny Tunes. Yeah. And people. and uh, yeah, he eventually voiced Daffy. And uh, and bugs saying uh, talking about uh, hips don't lie, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's the weird thing too is that I could do other people's bugses. So Whoa. wait, how does like, this work? Like that, like impressions of other people doing <laughs> right, right. Oh, so so talking about hip hop, Billy West, uh, the mm-hmm. voice of Bugs for Space Jam with Michael Jordan. Yeah, on that soundtrack, there is a track on there called uh, Buggin. And it, oh it, yes, I know Buggin. And it's and it's you do I do I do I'm so I swear. Most excited and, about and, it. And, and it is like written by uh, 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 Sean Carter on the album, aka what? aka Jay Z. He You're did not kid. he did not want to be credited as Jay Z. <laughs> uh, Using and, his God given yeah. name on that one, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who does Bugs Bunny money? I'll give you some time to get more carrots every time I rhyme. Oh, Can a mouse man, write I know, this? I swear to you, I know Buggin. We used yeah. to listen to Buggin like playing N64. Yeah. It's <laughs> really <laughs> yes, of course, yeah. of course, of course. <laughs> wow, playing Goldeneye, li- blasting Buggin, eating Cheetos for dinner. Yeah, yeah that oh. was the life. Wow, wow. I haven't thought about Buggin in years. Yeah, oh, <laughs> play, just... if, if you call me right now, it's my ringtone. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, no, it's not. It's not. It's <laughs> not. <laughs> Wait, what's the so what's a what's Billy West versus Joe Alaska or like any of them in terms of like what, how can you spot the differences for for whatever reason when Billy Billy did that voice like when he sang on Buggin it just sounded to me the most like Bugs like anyone has ever gotten close to it mm-hmm. uh, it, it just within that song though for whatever reason I don't know what they did to it what they treated his voice but but there was something so good about his performance in that in that song. And then I don't know. I feel like Bergman was the the most accurate and came close to a, all the characters across the board. Like his his Daffy is insanely good. His his Yosemite is like amazing. Uh, you know, uh, in his prime, out the gate, like right when he started. And then Joel Lasky kind of had his own version of these characters. But again, what ties them all together for me? And then there was Greg Burson who who did Bugs Bunny in the. Super Bowl commercials before Space Jam. So there was a 1992 mm. Hair Jordan and Air Jordan. Oh, yeah. He yeah. was the one that was like, yes. uh, it was like a bunch of jocks, you know, antagonizing bugs. And then the two years later, they did, it was so popular, you know, they got my money. I bought the shoes and the shirt. Uh, they made a super, another Super Bowl commercial in 1994 where it was bugs versus, uh, bugs and, Mar- and Jordan versus Marvin the Martian because. Marvin, of course, steals all the ooh, all the Air Jordans on Earth. <laughs> so he still he steals them all. And then two years <laughs> after that is when Space Jam came out, wow. which I think was too late. Yeah, I th- I feel like it was two years too late. Mm-hmm. Had it had it come out like literally the year after, I don't know. Joe Joe Pitka was the one who directed uh, those commercials, and I thought did an, an amazing job. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, bringing those characters into the. You know, it wasn't hips don't lie. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's the, well, the way you move well. the carrot the patch. New, yeah. the, the choreographers of that show are the new Joe Pick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling relevance. you. Unfortunately, that will be burned into my memory forever. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask a quick general voice actor question? Because I know you go very hard. We like all these guys, like Thurl Ravenscroft yes. and stuff. Yeah. Do you have like your... Who are your guys? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> That's the De- question. Definitely. You can finally ask that. I was going to say, like, if it's not Mel Blanc, then for me it's Don Messick again. Mm-hmm. He was, like, the voice of Papa Smurf, Scooby-Doo. Mm-hmm. I believe he did Scrappy-Doo as well. Wow. Pa- 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 oh, pa- yeah. Puppy power. Hey, Uncle Scoob. Like, uh, it was just such a weird range of other – like, he was always the kid that – if Mel Blanc was like, you know, the main character, he was the the person that Mel Blanc was talking to. Mm-hmm. But he had such a nice, rich voice as well. He also voiced Hampton in oh, Tiny yeah. Toons. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, gee, Plucky. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think we could do that. You know, <laughs> uh, we got to talk to Buster and Babs first. <laughs> yeah, he was Hampton. Jeez. And um, and I actually voiced uh, a character that he, he originated, uh, Dr. Quest. On Johnny Quest, he was oh, the yeah. he was the scientist with the goatee and the bowl cut mm-hmm. and the uh, Johnny Haji. We have to stay close to race. He's there to protect us. <laughs> he was this guy, yes, <laughs> a really white scientist. That's all he was. <laughs> yeah. 
You're so great at those kind of like uh, stiff, smarmy, yeah. like which seem like a world of difference from the Looney Tunes characters. Mm-hmm. But that's but I guess Marvin kind of gets you. Yeah, into that, that weird area. like ethereal kind of like classic sounding character. And again, like bringing it back to Smash, right? Like oh, we yeah. did a lot of that. Yes, we did, you did we, the narration of the, the there was this Casino Nights thing. It was one of my favorite things in the show. <laughs> Casino really Nights. Uh, but Tigor. Tigor. Tigor was my favorite because oh, it was basically man. just the send up of Lionel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. From Thundercats, another booming kind of voice where you know those guys were drinking and doing <laughs> cocaine. <laughs> All sorts of things sure. you shouldn't be doing while on the job. It's like he's like an animal adventurer kind of character. Yeah. Okay, how about this? <laughs> yep, set, all right, whatever. I'm, af- I'm afraid you're going to throw a glass yeah. at me. That it will have to be the voice. But I'm also addicted to horse tranks. Yes, <laughs> that, that's my thing. As, ti- as If you're a half-man, you know, half-tiger uh, hybrid, you're, you're going to be doing some heavy stuff. You yeah. would be. The, if you never, like, uh, uh, it's not just, just, look, I love, the, I love the show. You did great, Kyle. did great. The last episode of the show has so much great, this Casino Nights thing that you narrated, <laughs> I love. You do the voice of Tiger, but a live action Tiger in a <laughs> yes. scene that's meant to play as dramatic on yes. the beach. That was and the Kyle best footage. And Skip is the worst, doing the worst acting, the best worst acting you've ever seen. You made our dreams come true with I to... just don't know how. I mean, I wish I were on set for. <laughs> if there was anything I was ever on set for, I wish like if I had seen that with my own eyes, seeing a guy in like a tiger mascot costume acting all and the sun. It was like golden hour. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> like, perfectly. Like, like, Dave McCary directed the, over, the hell out of it, overlooking the beach. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so so beautiful. They built this like incredible practice. It was like the turtles, our turtles' dream of like yes. what they would have done in yeah. those live action movies. Like in. Inc- immaculate suit built essentially only for him to say really stilted dialogue <laughs> and not do stuff even though the suit was capable of it yeah, yeah. It, it's built just to do this <laughs> hokey scene on the beach it was perfect and again uh it's it's one of those things where you're like man uh, if 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 that ever had like a another season or another celebration of that show to do like a, a, a live theme park version of all those oh yeah <laughs> all oh, those God. characters oh. in the rides and stuff oh, you like know that. we would have gone into some <laughs> theme park territory hips don't <laughs> lie with those characters yes we could have well it, it's an alternate universe yeah we that's had, true. Had to right, make right. up an alternate universe Shakira sure and an alternate hips uh, alternate body parts that also don't lie yeah. a lot <laughs> yeah. of things don't lie <laughs> sure can I let me I know you got to go Eric there's just one, one more clip just as a fun little thing on the way out uh, um the, and to see if you can name the the, the voices on this so this is Daffy centric. I think Daffy carries this one pretty well. Uh, oh, yes. I just listened to his birthday song. This is from <laughs> Australia. This oh. is a live show that they put all of in like a souvenir video that you could buy. Um, and I, I was pretty delighted by this. A so. souvenir video you could buy of Daffy's birthday. Of well, of like everything you could do at the theme park. Which uh, uh, talking about Warner Brothers stuff, this was this crazy. They had a Batman Returns dark ride simulator ride that they filmed on the set like the sets were still up and then they oh. ran a camera through it what? like so it really does feel like being in a burden it's like the closest to a burden ride. Ima- imagine the ride was you're you're having a close conversation with danny devito as the penguin and <laughs> all that purple mouth juice is splashing <laughs> yeah face. the black blood he's yeah. on the verge of an yeah. orgasm and he's spewing black blood yeah. that's basically yeah. that's the ride that's the yeah. batman returns experience mm-hmm. like what is it and you put your face through this hole and it's danny devito on the other side going <laughs> I can be mayor. Yeah. I want to fuck the cat. Man. It's Oswald. Oswald Cobblepot. And then <laughs> I'm doing the same. I'm doing my Sumner Redstone voice. I don't have a lot of vocal yeah. range, but I hey. do. I don't. I think those are two that are good to pair together. If you have a whole demo reel of just Sumner Redstone, I, I believe you got the you oh, got great. the part. I'm the only Sumner Redstone in the biz. That's true. Although I figured uh, out he's from Boston. Actually, the real voice. I need to get a little Boston in there. So that's that's my Hold personal on. homework. Hold on, it's Hollywood out. calling. What's that? You got the part. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> By even thinking about it at all, I'm the only Sumner out there. In the animated Sumner Redstone show that's coming soon. <laughs> Little Sumner Adventure. Little Sumner. Yeah. Little, Little Sumner Rising. Sumner, Sumner Babies. Yes. <laughs> Sumner Babies. Oh, oh, not all these legitimate babies. Hey, it's my oh, birthday. Oh, okay. So not. Oh, confusingly, Jordan. I'm sorry. Hey, this is another birthday Bob song Bob that's a rap. Oh, no more. Do you have Bring another birthday file? I could not have made this more confusing. It's a birthday song that you might 
<laughs> uh, you might know by a, by a certain Each popular group. Each character has group. their own birthday song. Well, of here course. We, uh, uh, I say it's see. it's me, Foghorn, and I'm here to say. Wait, still not this one. Oh, no. It's oh always a character, and they're here to say. That is how <laughs> send you this one. That is how a bunch of lame writers <laughs> <laughs> thought rap was for. My well, name is still, Tweety, and I'm so here to say. Years. For so many years, you have to Look, say. They were let out of it. They were up to their eyes in horse tranks. You know. Yeah, right. If, well, if they I were didn't on tranks send too. it, do you have? Do you also? Here's an alternate one. Do you have the clip called "This Is Where Bugs Lives"? <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Let's do that one because this also in charting the Six Flags like. A bugs advertising of evolution. This this you can tell is kind of late nineties, early two thousands. They gotta get a little hip. They gotta. I I don't want to say what it reminds me of. It's just it's an odd <laughs> song to me. Let's, the let's second house party this. movie with kid and play. Exactly. Those are the vibes party, sure, I was sure. getting. Oh my god, that ride is still there. Yes. New Looks nicer. That's still there. Bugs' house. Where bugs lives. If you go in there now, it's like the most. It's like it's like being on the set of Seven. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah, this is definitely a, a crime scene, and it's Bugs' house, and there's like one like sofa, like one seat, one fridge. And then there's like a hole where like actual sunlight comes through. And I feel like you're in like, I'm just waiting for like Morgan Freeman to be like, don't open the box. Whatever you do, do not open the box. He filled the room with air freshener yeah. so they wouldn't be onto the bad smell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Smells like dead rabbit in here. <laughs> I'll tell you, hips don't lie. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, man. Go there now. Go there tomorrow. You'll you'll probably see me there. You'll see. Yeah, uh, yeah. So you'll see Bugs' <laughs> we'll, weird little room. We'll have to do an episode on just the room. Why don't just we do room. an episode where we go and film it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the only thing. That's the next sure. possible. If there was a sequel to this episode, we might have to do that. I mean, of course, with our phones and not tell anyone that we're doing that there. But mm. uh, I think, I think nobody we, would. I, I, yeah, we could bring no a full camera care, crew. Right? <laughs> I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> they're not looking out too, like too heavily. A 50 person yeah. shoot, I think, would I think be fine. You, you could get away with recording an entire podcast in that little Bugs Bunny room. I think so. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe that's the next, that's the way we have to, that's the only way we can top <laughs> this is doing it in his house. If there's room for four people in there, yeah. that I'm sure. not sure about. If one of the employees like kind of tries to figure out what's going on, we just go, hey, get out of here. And they go, all right. <laughs> hey, weren't you just vaping in here, kid? You can't do that. <laughs> Slip him a 50. Slip them a 50 or a vape cartridge. A vape yeah. cartridge. <laughs> and then they'll be on their way. <laughs> Live from Pepe Le Pew's Peak. It is a, <laughs> no, the podcast. No. We the can't ride. record there. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Eric, this has been an absolute blast. I'm thrilled to say, Eric Bazza, you survived Podcast The Ride. I, I, I would go again. That's the <laughs> in, in the words of my son, can we do this again? Oh, that's Scre- right. F you, Dad. I can't believe you're not letting me ride the mummy twice. <laughs> uh, Sorry, ultra platinum podcast the ride yeah. pass only. That's how yeah. it Sorry, uh, being the voice of a uh, Woody Woodpecker doesn't matter, son. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the insult to injury is that your son had to be mad for the 15, 20 minute escalator yeah. ride back to oh, the oh, upper line. It was, it was hell. It was hell. Yeah. Yeah. It was hell. <laughs> but guys, thank you so much for having me on. I had a great time reminiscing oh, and talking about Friggin' theme parks and rides and and uh, again how they predict the future sometimes this like is... like Tom Hanks and Big. yeah this is a, a magical garment thank you for for bringing it I hope some of the magic uh, uh, I don't know unfurls onto us somehow uh, yeah no, no. or um, or I lose it in this episode and I lose uh, tomorrow they tell me I'm fired <laughs> oh, <no>. hey uh, <laughs> remember that things. fame and fortune contract that you signed the other day <laughs> it's gone it's, it's rescinded it got uh, rained on let's exit through the gift shop is there anything you'd like to plug. Uh, just my appearance on this show. I'm. It, that's it. This is what's wow. happening right Watch now. Watch this show right now. <laughs> God damn it! And if you just finished listening, send it to your friends. Oh, wow. listen to it that's again. A really good plug. That's yeah, not that's a plug nice. that we do. That's thoughtful, and we should incorporate. It. I he could have plugged Bugs' house. He could have done it, but this is a very nice. That's that's yeah. what uh, that's what Canadians do. You oh, know, that's right. Well, we appreciate I that. the politeness and the sweetness that I, I appreciate. The, the only, the only real way to end it is the yeah, the the the, the, the uh, that's all, folks. <laughs> I was gonna ask, yeah. and then you did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. All right, thanks, everybody. Bye. Forever dog. This has been a Forever Dog production.
Executive produced by Mike Carlson, Jason Sheridan, Scott Gardner, Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. For more original podcasts, please visit foreverdogpodcasts.com and subscribe to our shows on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Keep up with the latest Forever Dog news by following us on Twitter and Instagram at Forever Dog Team and liking our page on Facebook. <laughs>